for Baturbiev Bivol has been revealed. You can see it here on screen. Now, the first thing that will strike you is that it's not the typical Saudi supercard that we've become accustomed to of late. This is more like a standard pay-per-view card. Not that it's a bad card. It just isn't stacked with as many 50-50s as, as I say, other Saudi cards of late. And by Saudi cards, I simply mean cards that are financed by the Saudis, not necessarily that take place in Saudi Arabia. Anyway, I'm gonna echo the sentiments of of several members of my element group regarding some of these fights and the running order. So we'll start at the bottom and work our way to the top. First off, Mohamed Alakel, that's how I'm gonna pronounce it, versus Jesus Gonzalez, a nothing fight. I guess it's a prospect getting his feet wet. Next fight up on the card, who cares about that? Next one, you got Ben Whitaker taking on Liam Cameron. Cameron is tough and durable, six losses, but never been stopped. Dropped a split decision to Lyndon Arthur last time out. So a slight step up for Ben Whitaker, but he'd still be expected to win that. Next up, we got Jay Opataya versus Jack Massey. None of the other cruiserweight champions want to fight Opataya at the moment, and he doesn't have any mandatories due. So Jack Massey as a voluntary is perfectly acceptable as far as I'm concerned. The cruiserweight division isn't exactly stacked with talent, and Massey's coming off a win over Isaac Chamberlain. So I can accept it. Massey can be an awkward customer. He managed to take Joseph Parker the distance at heavyweight. So it'll be interesting to see if Opataya can get him out of there. Next up, we got the rematch between Fabio Wardley and Fraser Clark. Now, for me, this should be the chief support because other than the main event, this fight has the highest likelihood of producing fireworks. The only reason it's so far down the bill, as far as I'm concerned, is to cater to Chris Eubank's ego and Shakur Stevenson's ego. Yes, I know that Stevenson called is a world title fight, but let's be real, that's likely gonna be a snooze fest. It's gonna completely kill the momentum of the show. A boxing show is supposed to build up to a crescendo of excitement by the time the main event hits. By having Shakur Stevenson as chief support, you're virtually guaranteeing that that doesn't happen, unless he was fighting a Tank Davis, potentially, but in this fight right here, nah. Eubank Jr. against Zerometa has got no business being where he is. Nobody can make an argument really for Eubank Jr. being that high up the card. It's a tune-up for Eubank Jr. So bare minimum, Wardley Clark 2 needs to be above Eubank Jr. in the pecking order. And for my money, it should be chief support, which means above Stevenson Cordina as well. I'm thinking from the perspective of what's best for the viewer, never mind what's best for the fighter's egos. Zerometa is a guy who Eubank Jr. should handle comfortably. If he doesn't, then in the famous words of Prince Nassim, I think he needs to finish. <laughs> Zerometa is 25, two and two, only eight wins by KO. Both his losses were by KO. And those were to Gennady Golovkin in 2020 and Jaime Munguia in 2021. He also drew a couple of fights against obscure opponents in his homeland of Poland. Stevenson Cordina, well, Cordina's coming off a loss and it was a decisive loss too. It wasn't controversial. So I'm not sure why he's getting a world title fight. It's not like Stevenson Cordina is some long awaited matchup that we've always wanted to see. It's not. Stevenson's track record is snooze fest. So yeah, Wardley Clark should be chief support for me. In fact, J.R. Pattaya should feel insulted by Eubank Jr. being above him in the running order. Assuming the running order stays the way it appears in this picture. Maybe they'll chop and change it, we'll see. But yeah, Opataya, a world champion, lower down the pecking order than Eubank Jr. You might argue Eubank Jr. is a bigger name. He might be, but is there really gonna be more excitement for Eubank Jr. versus Zerometa than J.R. Pattaya versus Jack Massey? It isn't just about the fighter, it's about the fight, right? And I think Opataya versus Massey has a better potential for fireworks than Eubank Jr. versus Zerometa. Now, Eubank Jr. normally is entertaining, but I would argue that Opataya even more so because he's a serious puncher and he's always going for the knockout. So I would have had Wardley Clark 2, then Opataya Massey, then Stevenson Cordina, then Eubank Jr., Zerometa, and the rest of the card can stay the same. And as for the top of the bill, Baturbiev Bivol, well, we all love that fight. We've been waiting for this for a very long time. Hopefully there's no pullouts, no injuries again, because Baturbiev pulled out previously and we get to find out once and for all who the daddy is in the 175 pound division anyway give me your thoughts in the comment section below about this undercard let me know how you feel about it and what you would change if anything